Hello guys, and welcome to the Season 3 NRSL Universal Land Cup Series Daytona 500 here at Daytona Beach, Florida. We are going to be here for 30 laps of action, and I'm joined by two co-commentators that are formerly Cup Series drivers, and one who missed it and could have made it, but oh well. They are Charles Jackson, the mayonnaise son of a bitch, and James Silverfox. Oh yeah. So guys... I mean Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream Sponsor. Yay, sponsor! So, anyway, um, we're going to go through our top ten lineup, and we're going to uh, show through the rest of the starting lineup, and we'll make our picks. But on the poll is Dylan Poteet, second is Devin Becker, third is Jackie Tang, fourth Chris Washer, fifth Kyle Sosnowski, sixth is Christopher Harley, seventh is Kyle Miller, eighth is Joseph Finesto, ninth is Brody Talley, completing the top ten is Alex May, and here is the rest of your starting lineup here at Daytona. A great lineup. <laughs> On the final row will be Charles Samper and Cody Lamas, one of our hometown heroes for this race. The other one, Michael Norman, as you saw in the lamp, will be starting also. This is the greatest back. lineup of all the times. Exactly. An all star cast lineup, a bunch of rookies yeah. as well. Two manufacturers making their debut Maserati, which is just Vanesto in the 62, top notch designs car, and Stephen Pollard III in the 06 with the Volkswagen Jetta. So, they're about to give the command right now, and uh, we're going to get these cars rolling off in just a bit, but 42 cars come in, only one's the Daytona 500 winner. We've seen BK Racing win last season's Daytona 500 at the time of Daniel Boyles, and season one for Front Row Motorsports at the time, Jacob Strump. So guys, out of this 42 car field, who is your pick to win this race? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good bull pick, even though Star Fox isn't even in there. What does the mayonnaise choose? I already won. <laughs> and now we're going to have... Happy, happy. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, happy Charles? Happy Eric Burton. Yeah. He ain't even in the series, you dildo. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Uh, 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 Poteet, like. <laughs> but uh, as the pace car dives down the pit road here, 30 laps of action. Here we go. Green flag is up, and season three is underway. There you go. No, Poteet's gonna win. So. Yeah. It's Poteet. He wins every race. Already. Going two, three wide is some of the pack there, and you can see it's going to be very interesting to see how these drivers will do heading into this race. Poti oh, is going to get the advantage over Devin Becker, and now it's just a matter of time to see when they will go three wide and possibly even four wide. Here comes Jackie Tang to the inside, making his rookie debut with the 81 car. Driving fast in all this race, Jackie Tang uh, for Tang Racing. Just going to try to see if he can lead the first lap of Season 3, but here comes Kyle Sosnowski, one of four guys returning in the Cup Series, trying to lead the first lap. And Sosnowski now trying to peek to the inside for the lead. At the strike to complete lap number one, rookie Jackie Tang will do that. Congrats is, on the championship. And this is going to be an intense race for these drivers to know who is going to win this. So these guys got to focus on trying to not only get up to the front, but to not cause the big one. Seth Cole... Running the Florida Lottery oh, Paint yeah. Scheme. Trying to see if he can get the sponsorship car to win. Yeah, here we go. And now oh, Luvier yeah. to the lead, three wide. Luvier running the Dogie Coin Machine there. For Wrecking Balls. Should be interesting to see what Chris Luvier can do. A uh, uh, Iron Rail uh, <coughs> famous racer. We're going to race. going to be having Dim Sex. It's in the bed. Here we go. Exactly. Now Shelton trying to lead at that lap at the time, but no, it will be Chris Luvier at the line. As well. Now we're going to get the ticker up there. Yeah. Jessica Shelton. And here comes Keith Batson to the inside for the lead in the 46 car. Who got in last minute before the signups came up, driving the 46 House of Color car. It's a very interesting uh, scheme with a very interesting font as well. And now here comes Michael Walton, and here comes Steam Power to the third of the Volkswagen Jetta, heading for the lead three wide. There you go. 
He's Richard important. Johnson in this race? I <laughs> wish he was, but unfortunately he's not. Damn it, I was going to make a good joke about him. You can make it anyway. <laughs> if Richard Johnson's here, he would open the package, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Volkswagen cool. trying to lead its first lap in the NRSL. And trying to lead it over Jay Barker, and he is going to do that. That's a big accomplishment for Volkswagen, as uh, oh, yeah. the Maserati is trying to work their way up. But now Jay Barker goes to the lead. Nope, here comes rookie Matt Dalio to the lead, bringing along Joshua Balkin. Dalio. Oh, yeah, Balkin going to open the package here in a moment. Here yeah. Go. And look at this pack. They are going three by three throughout the entire field, except for about the front row. But still, this is unbelievable racing. Now Michael Norman, one of the hometown heroes that we mentioned, 10 to the lead three wide. I don't think any driver, unless your name is Cody Lamas, who's just nominating Nero and, and shit, has ever won at their home track of Daytona. That is a very rare thing to see, but if Michael Norman or Cody Lamas can get the job done, that'd be a great accomplishment, as Norman's going to lead at the line. Home track, bad luck. That's like an every, that's like an everywhere. Exactly. Here comes Ramey Fisher, but me. a line lower. Here comes Tony Blazer. Except for me, I won races on German tracks. <laughs> exactly, but Tony Blazer, one of uh, the other one of the other four drivers that's making his big return. So Snosky was another one that we saw earlier. The other ones were Michael Walton and, uh, if memory comes to me correctly, um, Michael Walton, Tony Blazer, Sosnowski, uh I can't think of it now. Great, they'll probably come to me. But anyway, now the Monster Energy Ford Fusion of Dylan Young is going to go to the lead, and here comes the forty of Cody Lamas to the inside for the lead. Who was it? I can't think of it. It's going to get to me, but, um... Uh... No, was it Harley? I can't remember who it was. There's Great. so much diversity. There is so much diversity. Huh. It, no, that was an awful joke. My apologies. <laughs> I, it, I only heard about diversity, and then after that went blank. So. There's so much diversity in this series that immigration is going to become an even bigger problem. Oh, interesting. Oh my God. <laughs> Too soon for the immigration jokes. <laughs> oh, this is yeah, the other one. Yeah, Austin yeah. Talley. Someone that was actually offended yeah. by what someone says on the internet, yeah. then they got a problem. <laughs> Austin Talley was the other one. I forgot to mention that was a uh, one of the other drivers returning to the NRSL competition for the first time after a uh, season or more hiatus. Tony Blazer's got a big story, though. Last time he was in any NRSL competition was Season 1 Outback. And you think about it, that was early 2012 that was at the time. We are currently in 2014, late in October, and all of a sudden we see Tony Blazer back in Intercell competition. As we're in lap 7 of 30, surprise we haven't seen four wide yet at this point, and we're getting closer and closer to get to that point because we are still gr clean and green, three wide racing throughout the entire field, but one mistake could cost half the field a chance to win. Oh yeah. Mason what? Powers to the inside for the lead, three wide. Going around the Endetta of Tweenix Racing. Bringing along the Audi of Anthony McCurry, who was the big hype in Season 2. Bringing in a new manufacturer. Now the hype's all on Volkswagen and Maserati. But Anthony McCurry for Audi trying to lead at the stripe over Mason Powers. And oh. Powers is barely going to lead. Yeah, hey, now James, is, but yay. Now James Qualsley. Mason Powers, I don't know much about him. I only know that he um, has only signed up for mine, but... He had to be in someone else's series, but then again, I could be wrong, though. James Qualls? No, uh, uh, Mason Powers in the 41. But James uh, Qualls, though, to the lead. Nick Smith uh, now coming to the lead, and here comes Trent Dunham to the lead. This is a James guy James Qualls, who, long boy. Oh, Trent, my nigga. <laughs> Charles That's James Qualls' nickname, Nick Long Boy. Interesting. Because <laughs> Joe Hanks. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. He's a long boy. <laughs> but uh, Trent Dunham to the lead, though. The guy who probably hates Daytona pretty much out of anyone that's in this inner community. He is barely going to lead the stripe over the 23 of Angel Navarro. But tough. This is a, something about Trent, though. He won the NSRA T-Mobile Cup Series Daytona 500 not long ago. So can Trent win the NRSL U.S. Orlando Cup Series Daytona 500? We'll find out later on as Alex May now goes to the lead. He's bringing along the champion Chris Washer to the lead, who's bringing along the pole center Dylan Pote. And Twinx is going to have cars on the outside and the inside of the three wide scenarios. Remember when Trent Dunham used to always have the uh, Daytona 500 bad luck thing in SRA, and then he won one in Danny Series, and then, you know. yeah. Won, <laughs> won the NSRA T Mobile Cup Series one? Exactly. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Not an actual Snickers Gub one. <laughs> yeah, that guy, he's probably thinking of that one instead. <laughs> I can imagine, but Pote is going to lead at the stripe over Clint Spillman in the 10, who had the dominant season last season, winning four races. He's now going to get Max. put to the middle. Hit right. As um, DJ Curtis is going to go to the lead three wide. And I thought I saw four wide in the back, but then again, I must be seeing things. But we're still in Pote, moving. the Jimmy Johnson of Rare Test 3. I uh, know. I think that is agreeable. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway. Wins, the, wins four races in every series he's in. <laughs> Kyle Miller's going to go to the inside of the lead, making his rookie debut in any NRSL competition. Kyle Miller was a part of the Irie Monster Energy Super Speedway Series. Didn't have a lot of luck. But now in the Cup Series here, whoa, as Spillman got a little close to his teammate right there. Kyle Miller's going to try to lead his first lap. And there's the driver who led the first official lap of Season 3, Jackie Tang, to the lead now. That's so tangy. <laughs> who's also been a part of the ARCSA and Neuro competition and a little bit of the NSCRA competition. Jaggy Tang, now part of NRSL, should be interesting. He hasn't been ARCSA competition for like four months. Exactly. <laughs> now bringing along the insider Sosnowski, Seth Cole, and Keith Batson in the 46. Sosnowski goes up high, Seth Cole moves to the middle. I don't know why they do that to go to the high line, but I think Sosnowski... No, not going to block. Seth. It's good. Seth. And now Seth-y-poo. Keith Batson to the lead over Jessica Shelton. I am amazed, yeah. though, how they have not wrecked it up at this point. But then again, these guys are racing very smart. It's because your drafting distance isn't set to 1.1 like everybody else's. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Chris Louvier goes to the lead. As I don't remember, but this is like perfect racing, though. I don't mind it. If we don't have a wreck fest, then that's good, but... They did wreck it up at times. We used the state tunnel last season with these cars. They raced very well. There was only one caution that came out, and that was towards the back of the pack. And we'll see what will happen. Another, oh, and another guy that's making his NRSL return, I forgot to mention, is the 24 Sky Commons. Last time we saw him in NRSL competition was Season 1 Universal Orlando. And it's been quite a while since hearing that name in NRSL competition. Glad to see him back. Seth Cole got a little close to Chris Riviera right He's there. He's blocked. Sky Commons, he's blocked me on Facebook. Uh-oh. <laughs> Steam Potter the third leads another lap for, or, for Volkswagen. How about that for Volkswagen? Lean two laps in the Daytona 500. And now the 22 of Jay Barker going to go to the inside for the lead. Bringing along Devin Becker, Michael Norman, and Tony Blazer. Speaking of manufacturers, let's see where the Maserati is at. Maserati. I think Joey Logano's in the lead. Yep, Joey. Jay Barker. Yep, there he is. I see Onesta right there. He is in the middle of the pack, and you're going on board with him right now. Man, he is in quite a horse nest. And, okay, I thought he was going four wide for a moment. But Onesto. Oh, those blurry graphics are amazing. I know. Uh, Blurriness. Blurred lines. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. These graphics are awesome. No, I'm kidding. But Michael Norman now getting put three wide. As, look who is leading. Uh, Jay Barker still. Trying to hold them off, though, as we are nearing the halfway point. And I believe when we raced here last season for the 500, that was when our caution came out. Was at halfway. So, this could be a key thing. Could we see four wide in this time? And I've been doing test races here, too. They managed to caution before lap 10. So, it's very interesting to see how these guys have changed. Oh, yeah. And Sorrell, the most, pu- the most famous show on public access. Interesting. <laughs> we... <laughs> Austin Remember when Tally. public access used to be a thing? <laughs> yes, right. Good times. Austin Talley now goes to the lead, and here comes Cody Lermis. Cody? Cody Lermis? Lermis bringing along rookie Kyle Keith, another Nura uh, guy there, or was it Nura, I should say. Now in NRSL competition. Cody Lamus. That's better. Ramian Fisher now, he's bringing along with uh, Toyota manufacturer... Uh, the 18 of Isaiah Bernique. Or Isaiah else Sean would say. What would Sean Galligan call Cody Lamas? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Baby oh, Cody. Keith puts a good move and blocks the 18 <laughs> of Bernique. Take a look at the back of the field, just checking up on them. Uh oh, look out. Okay, guys, good job. Kyle Bush. <laughs> and we are at halfway, 15 laps to go at the stripe. And we have been clean and green throughout this entire time. I have been very surprised. But anything can happen as front row was working together of Richie and Sanford, and now that is gone away. 
LOL. Uh-uh. Kyle LOL. Keith leading another lap, though, dealing with Charles Samper, and here comes the Maserati of Joseph Ernesto. Maserati. Oh, my. International manufacturers are here. striking this season. Here we Keith go. can't put the block this time. Now Maserati trying to lead their first lap of the NRSL. Maserati just no scope the field. <laughs> go. Eugene Max trying to get the lead, but take a look at this, folks. Another historical move for this se this season's 500. Maserati makes their first lap lead at Daytona. Yeah, MLG. All them, in, all them folks who support Maserati. them Maseratis are probably, like, shitting themselves right now. Yeah. Mason. Uh, like, who, people drive Maseratis. Right. Anyway. I've never, I've never met one person who's driven a Maserati in my entire life. Well, I Joseph Vanesto even... does now. But, oh, look at this. Navarro was going to peek underneath uh, the 41, but Mason Powers said no. He's going to go to the inside now as we're in that 17-30. Mason so. Powers used his power. Oh, God. Ooh. So much jokes. Fun. So much fun. Next, Mason yeah. Power, he used power to get up to the front because he's powerful. <laughs> power. And it looks like the 41 will lead that lap. Here comes David Rivera, Walmart Cup Series driver who's in this series. He's done very well in that series, and now he's going to go to peak to the inside of the lead, bringing you along his teammate of the 16 of Brody Tally, and also bringing along Trent Dunham and Oh, wow, Spillman manages to get to the inside and not cause any uh, bad moves there. Hey, hey. Yo, Dylan, you know we have two separate communities when I don't recognize, like, 90% of these drivers. <laughs> it happens, though. <laughs> and people see the international communities dying. <laughs> oh. Jokes. Jokes on you. But Trent Dunham, he's going to try to lead at the strike. Oh. Again. And Dunham yeah, is going to lead at the stripe, but Alex May peeks to his inside for the lead. Alex May, now Kyle Miller to the inside for the lead, three wide. Three by three racing throughout the field, and I think toward the back. They must be seeing things again, but I'm surprised. I thought they were going to go four wide, but then again, they're being very cautious. They're not being too aggressive, but they're being aggressive where they're going three by three throughout this whole field. Craig Bibble's up in the front. Of course, no one's aggressive. And Sheldon's going to peek to the inside three wide. Bring it along Jackie Tang and Clint Spillman. Ooh. Last time, Silver Fox, me and you were in uh, co commentating at Dubai. Uh, Spillman won that race. So it's interesting to see the 10 car up in the front of the field. If he wins this race, then we're his good luck commentary team. Absolutely. I think that'd be the team to help him uh, boost up his season. Sheldon did lead that lap. Here comes Tang to the inside. And a driver I've noticed that's actually been very... Who's now actually started to go on the inside line now is Sky Commons in the 24. Finally found oh, that yeah. inside line. He's working his way up. And the same goes to 14 of Christopher Harley. I know it's a name that's not been well known, but... The last time I've heard this guy ever in any NR and all that stuff, from what I know of, he was a part of a few of my special races back in the early days of my channel. Since then, nowhere to be found. Now joins the NRSL, making a big return. Can't wait to see what he will do throughout this season. I And Poti, the pole sitter, I think he led at the stripe. Yes, he did. But he's going to get challenged by Michael Walton in the 99. And we got 10 laps to go, folks. Anything can happen. 10 laps to go. Get ready. 10 laps to go. Here we go. And amazing enough, no cautions have came. All 42 drivers still here. Any one of these 42 drivers can win it. Anyone. Oh, really? I wouldn't doubt out, though, that 06 Jetta right there. He has been having a very good run. Stephen Pollard the third. I can't wait to see if he can get this win. See if he can get four wins uh, like in this series, like in mine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> KSI, Kyle Sosnowski. He's going to lead this lap. Sky Comet's now going to peek to the inside three wide per second. Sosnowski holding them up, though, very well. Oh, yeah. Kyle Sosnowski, Arkansas's biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> Sarcasm at its best. <laughs> but now Sky Comet's to the inside for the lead. Here comes the 06 all over the 24th bumper. To the lead? No. Not going to go for the lead. Matt Dahlia, though, trying to peek to the inside of the 06. Jetta for a second, but the 06 is getting a good run in the high line. 
He's going to make a move now for the lead. Bring it along Harley and Devin Becker. Oh, man. Becker running the Tight. Spy Plus Optics car. Trying to see for the 7019 oh, he can get the win. And Volkswagen's going to lead their third lap of this race. Wow, Volkswagen has just exploded out of the gates this race. They're making a statement already. Who cares if they win or not? They made a statement today. Volkswagen with the MLG drop shot onto the field. Whoa, Keith Batson slid up a little bit there. Oh, yeah. Volkswagen wants a good KD for their se for the series. I think so. <laughs> they want that, that, that 3.0 key, key, KD uh, average. There's Cole Daly. We haven't even talked about him at all. He's working his way up in the inside line. Let's oh, go. God. He just won this race now. <laughs> Let's go on board with one of the drivers in this field. We're going to go in the middle of the pack. Let's go on board with the 34 of uh, Charles Sanford and show you what it's like on board going in the middle three wide as we got seven laps to go. They are racing very, uh, very, very pack racing here. They're not making it too aggressive. And I can't believe this. Pollard led another lap at that time. Four laps led. Oh, man. Now he's going to fall to the back and finish 42nd. Here we go. These guys are racing not too aggressive. But they're racing enough where they're keeping themselves away from wrecking each other. So these guys are racing very smart. Are they? And Trent Dunham, he knows he's won the 500 twice. The guy who's normally cursing this. Oh, there they go. Kyle Miller around in the back. Alex May. And the caution is out. This changes everything. <laughs> Kyle Miller, who had a miserable season in the Super Speedway Series, gets taken out in the 500, and the Alex May may have gotten screwed as well. Austin Talley led it's at the, the stripe, and Cody yeah. Lomas got second. We have, we have a couch. Oh, yeah. This Boy. changes everything. The caution came out on lap 24. Oh, Washer, what are you doing? Lap okay. 24, we're going to have, we can have a green light checkered. I, I think so, either. Oh, whoa, DJ Curtis. Oh, Curtis got turned by Nick Smith, but they Careful. saved it right there. Close call right there, but this is going to be exciting, folks. I think we're only going to have a two or three laps to go, and it looks like the one car that's not going to win it is going to be the 43 of Kyle Miller. Oh, They're going to go into overdrive. So, while everyone's getting back in line and doing their pace laps, Austin Talley is your leader. Let's take a look what happened to brought ourselves our first caution of the race. And we're back. We now know what happened as Silver Fox has got the laps, which is pretty funny. Alex May just forces a forward ride going into Kyle Miller, who gets into Joseph Onesta right there. Onesta keeps his car together. May slaps the, scrapes the wall, but Miller's going to take the worst head of them all. Bounces into the wall, goes into Alex May, and the caution coming out with only six laps to go. So, interesting move there by Alex May to dump the 43. That's going to cost him and Miller's chance to win the 500. But 40 other drivers have a chance to win it. Caution is out. Alex, or, excuse me, Austin Talley is your leader. Let's take you back to the green to see how many laps to go we will have uh, when we go back to this restart. Well, we are back. Oh boy. No drivers are out of the race, but still... It's going to be very interesting, folks. A green-white checker to determine the winner of this race. We've had so many of these in last season for Outback and Cup. Season 3 Outback, Season 2 Universal Orlando. Of this field, underdogs play in key factor. Anthony Ritchie, Front Row Motorsports won Season 1 with the 34. If the 30 wins, Front Row Motorsports may have just oh, done something with inter in the inner cell what no team could ever do. Lamas is in second. He is a guy that can win for Hendrick Motorsports and win at his home track. Tally is somewhat underfunded, but, you know, you never know what can happen. Same with the three of Michael Norman. He's the same boat as the 48 of Lamas. 88 of Dally, well, da Junior Nation and stuff. They won the 2014 David Daytona Yellen. 500. <laughs> Blazer, somewhat underfunded. He is in six. What a way for him to come back to the inner cell to win it all. Parley making his inner cell debut, yeah. who never made any inner cell starts in eighth. 7th is Becker, ninth is Jay Barker, and Kyle Keith, where did he come from? Up to 10th. But here we it's go, gonna guys. It's going to be someone in the top 5. Pace car dives down to pit road, green, white, checkered. Here, here we, we go. go. Green oh, flag is to out. switch it into maximum overdrive. Get yes. Board, and look at this. Top 2, managing to pull away, Michael Norman in the 3. 
Oh, He's trying to go for third. Look at that. 38 with that edgy move to the outside. And front row looks like their chance to win is over, but Anthony Reggie, he's going to try to stay in the top 10. Tony Blazer working his way up as well, and Harley getting kicked up to the high line. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Michael I Norman, tried. he's peeking underneath Cody Lamas, and I believe Tony Blazer's peeking underneath him. Oh, wait a minute, Cody with a crossover. To the inside goes the 48. Blazer and Becker falling along. Oh, my word. LOL to bring caution. I hope they don't call it a caution. That would be a bad thing. Maserati's in the back. Volkswagen's on the high line. That's pretty much it. Blazer now trying to peek to the inside of the lead. White flag is out. Oh, Blazer to lead. Here comes Devin shit. Becker out of nowhere. Becker going to lead. Also, another thing, too, is that coming into the Daytona 500, Unknowns also can win the Daytona 500. It's been well known for that. Jay Barker and Kyle Keith are coming along as well in the 22 and 42. Here comes Barker. And now Kyle Keith even lower. <laughs> Ramey and Fisher trying to push the 42 up to the front. Here comes Kyle Keith to the lead. The 42 car had an OK season when part of the third came in. <laughs> Kyle Keith trying to get this win. Go. Fisher has the only shot left to get over Keith. Fisher with the peak. But I think time is running out, though. At the strike, who's going to get it? It's going to be Kyle Keith winning the Daytona 500 in Season 3. Maximum overdrive! Kyle Keith for Sega Motorsports oh. has done the unthinkable and has MLG. won the Daytona 500. That quick scooping. MLG. Unbelievable. Kyle Keith, who's restarted in the 10th position at the time, out of nowhere comes in and wins the Daytona 500. Oh. And, get this, this is the first time that a big team has won a Daytona 500. The past two seasons were underfunded, and now a big-name team has won the Daytona 500, being of Kyle Keith. <laughs> and look at this that I just realized. Hendrick, three of their cars, have got into the top ten. The only car who did it was Chris Washer. Lol. Lamas ended up ninth, Dally 8th, and Sky Commons ended up 6th. Where did that 24 come from? Uh, well, when a mommy 24 and a daddy 24 love each other very much. <laughs> oh, jeez. But Kyle Keith, folks, is your Daytona 500 winner. Congratulations to him. What an accomplishment that is for that guy right there. That is, that is something. A guy who's been a part of the Neuro Leagues for quite some time made his NRSL debut, and the rookie will get it done yet again. Yay, Kyle Larson wins. <laughs> <laughs> right? Let's give the yeah. rest of the top ten rundown. Uh, Kyle Keith was your winner. Ramey and Fisher almost got the win, but give credit to him. He was a guy that is an Arkansas guy that ran very well. He will end up second. Yeah. Jay Barker Died. third. <laughs> right. Jay Barker third. <laughs> DJ Died. Curtis fourth. Arkansas Tony Blazer, guy fifth. ran very well, but he died. Who <laughs> <laughs> ran in Arkansas, but Interstell, he's alive. Tony Blazer ended up fifth. Great job for him making his big return to Interstell competition. Six Sky Commons, the same for him. Devin Becker ended up seventh, eighth. Cole Dowling, ninth. Cody Lawless completely in the top ten was James Qualls. The best car on track was Michael Walton. We didn't even talk about him. A 45.905. Actually, only three cars ran a 45. Where did wow. Clit Spillman finish? Spillman? Good question. He ended up... Oh, wow. He ended up... Um, I just had him, too. Uh, 31st. Damn, he didn't open that clit enough. No, there's Michael Norman right there in the three. He ended up uh, 15. Chris Levere, Chris Levere ended up 11th. 12th, Austin Talley. 13th, Eugene Demax. 14th, Anthony Ritchie. 15th, Michael Norman, as mentioned. 16th for Stephen Pollard, the third. Not bad day for Volkswagen, but they'll look forward to the next race at Phoenix. 16th, or uh, excuse me, seventeenth was Matt Dalio. Eighteenth was Matt was um uh Christopher Harley. Nineteenth was Nick Smith, and rounding out the top twenty was Keith Batson. Here's the rest of the results here as mentioned, and uh, I'm gonna go down to here make it easier. Charles Samper ended up twenty first, twenty second is Kasselowski, twenty third Michael Walton, twenty fourth Chris Washer, the champion. Not a bad or good start for him, but uh, we'll see what the five can do as the later stages progresses. 25th was Dylan Poti, the pole sitter. 26th is Anthony McCurry. 27th, Ian Dutta. 28th, Seth Pohl. 29th, Joshua Balkin, the clean top 30. 
was Jackie Tang. 31st was Clint Spillman, as mentioned. 32nd, Dylan Young. 33rd, Isaiah Bernique. 34th, Mason Powers. 35th, Jessica Sheldon. 36th, Dave Rivera. 37th, Angel Navarro. 38th, Brody Talley. 39th, Trent Dunham. Man, this Daytona luck cannot go well whatsoever. And 40th was Joseph Anesto. That damage that he had really did affect him somewhat. And then the final two, Kyle Miller and Alex May. Tough break for those three right there, but another race we look forward to next week. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this day, Daytona 500. If you like this race, be sure to give a like, comment beneath your thoughts on this race, and keep your ride for at least um, of the first five races. Comment at least two of them, or if you can, all of them would be nice. Subscribe, be a part of the NRSL. I also want to thank James Starfox and Charles Jackson for joining me in the co-commentary booth. Please sub to the channels as they are down below in the description down below. And actually, a funny thing I've realized is that um, the top five of the field were all rookies that finished. Wow, that's amazing. Hey. Hey. All rookie case. But uh, nonetheless, hey. though, Thanks. If, um, if possible, though, it'll be interesting to see who will win at Phoenix. But, or actually, I should just say Tweenix. Thank you, Charles. So yeah. till then... Yes, Tweenix jokes. Awful name. So till then... Goodbye, everybody. Congrats one last time to Kyle Keith on the Daytona 500. And we leave you with the final words of wisdom with James Horny Fox and Charles Mayonnaise Jackson. Shrek is life. Shrek is love. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Uh, <laughs> Charles. Wow. <laughs> See you later, masturbators. Wow, what an interesting way to end. Yeah. Go 69 yourself. See you later.